So ideally, when you're on the water, at all times, have a life preserver with you. Regardless of if you're wearing it or not, have it with you on your kayak, in your canoe, or in your boat. It's required by law, and it's important you remember why we do that. It's a situation where when we enforce those laws, we're enforcing them not because we like to write tickets, we're enforcing the laws because they're so important. The vast majority of the people who drown and we lose in boat accidents in this state are from people who are not wearing life preservers or have life preservers with them. So we take that responsibility very serious to enforce that. There are type one, two, three, four, and five Coast Guard approved life preservers, and I have a variety of them set out here. The one that we will most often wear would be like this one right here. This one we wear on patrol, and this is a pretty serious life preserver. It's, it, it's a pretty big life preserver, but there's also smaller versions. So when you start looking at the different types of preservers, the thing you want to look for in the back of the life preserver is the Coast Guard approval. So in the back of all these will be a type one, two, three, four, or whatever it is and it will say it's Coast Guard approved. You make sure what you're using is Coast Guard approved. Some people make the mistake of taking a ski belt. And the ski belt will assist people if they fall in the water to help with flotation, but something like a ski belt like this will not have any Coast Guard approvals or markings on it. So even though it provides flotation, it's not something that would be considered legal to have out. Boats are required to have type four devices. Type four are throwables. A throwable could be like this boat cushion right here. This is something people will sit on. And again, it's gonna be Coast Guard approved on the back. And it will be something you can throw to someone. We most often tie these to a rope so we can pull people in. They're also in the form of these rings. So these rings that we have, also Coast Guard approved as a throwable. These are required for boats right here, 16 foot and longer. The vast majority of our problems, though, come with canoes and kayaks. So that's something we emphasize and why I definitely will uh, refer, refer people to having them with them and, you know, wearing them. So let me get back to this. This is an example of a flotation device of some sort. It's a boat seat. It has reflective material on it. But if you look, there's no Coast Guard approval on this. Whether this is or not, I don't know because it's not stamped on and there's no label sewn on it. In most of these situations, these life preservers that we have will have the markings on them, and in some cases, they will be for use for a certain age and a certain weight, and they will have that on the chart it comes with as well as on the life preserver. It will say what weight person to be put in it, because if you put a child in a full-size life preserver and they go in the water, they tend their arms go up and they tend will slip right out of it. They'll tend to slip out of it. So. Look for the Coast Guard approval on everything. Um, we have other types of preservers. This would be known as a Type 5. This is a tactical life preserver. You may see this, but if anybody's ever wearing this in Coast Guard or any military personnel or police personnel, this too is certified and it relies on foam packs. And all the foam packs have to be in for it to be certified. But again, when you open it up and look at it, you will uh, see that the labels and tags will show that it's Coast Guard approved. And maybe lastly, what's most important about this is that you don't necessarily have to wear these, but have them in the boat or kayak canoe with you. And that's really important. And that includes, when they're in the boat, having them out of the plastic packages and available. So if they're in some kind of plastic or some type of container and they're tucked in underneath the seats and some type of cooler or whatever, as long as you know where they are, that's good. But having them out and accessible is better. But if you have them in an enclosed area, like an area that's you know that's got a, uh, a lock on it or anything like that, be sure to label it life preservers so that people know if the boat goes down, if they're not familiar with the boat, they'll know where the life preservers are and they can get at them. Life preservers are designed different ways. Some are designed to go around your back of your neck and they'll hold you up in water. And there is a Michigan Safe Boating Guide we recommend everybody gets. They can find this information out online or from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. And it talks about where and what types of life preservers are needed, required, or applicable. And again, they don't cost much. The fancier ones, they do. Some of the fancier ones that people like now would be this type. This is a self-inflatable. And our patrol deputies and the Coast Guard, state police will often wear these. The DNR, the conservation officers, they'll often wear these. Once again, it's Coast Guard approved. 
and that's what you want to look for is the labeling. But this is not inflated until it's in the water. It has a water pressure valve, and they have some that operate lock off a pill like an aspirin, some that are just pressure uh, oriented. It also has a manual pull on it where you can pull this down, and it basically will turn inside out. These are becoming more and more popular because when you wear them, they really don't take up much room. They're not rubbing on your neck and so forth, and they become very, very popular. They obviously are more expensive but it's a great option for people to have if they're looking for you know, a lightweight application. So these are examples that we have, we use. I set them out here so that we could have this open discussion about you know, life preservers, which we call PFDs or personal flotation devices. So we can have this discussion with our family, have it with our friends. If you're gonna be out in a boat, it's not embarrassing to have a life preserver. It's not embarrassing to put one on, especially for canoes and kayaks, and especially when they're on big water. They really shouldn't be wearing these.